What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we're going to be talking about a iced tea that you can buy from the store and the new old Aurora Duo Cart. So this I bought, obviously it's empty now, um, but I bought from uh, my local grocery store. Um, it was about three fifty, dollars um, which is kind of expensive, but it is a glass jar. Uh, it's by a company called Pure Leaf, which usually makes iced teas you can buy all the time. Um, but this one specifically was um, like their new line of like loose leaf teas, which I have done a review of one of them. Um, which was actually a tea that I hated when I first tried, but actually grew to like it a lot. Um, this one is Sicilian lemon and honeysuckle flavor. And I actually was very disappointed by this very disappointed um i was expecting you know when i see something like this it claims to be made from real tea um you know supposedly claims to not have too much sugar in it which it, it kind of does um but it just it was very weak tasting it needed to like you know it says like real brewed tea kind of thing up here but it needed to steep for a long long more time to to get any kind of flavor it was super weak um, so I was really quite disappointed and I won't ever buy it again because of that. Um, just, I thought I'd try something new, see if I can't mention something new to you guys, especially since it's made supposedly with real steep she. Um, no bueno. Uh, Nest tea, iced tea is better, uh, to be honest. Um, yeah. Wasn't a fan. Uh, but what I am a fan of is this guy right here. Um, this is the new version of the Aurora Duo Cart. Um, so penchile.com, which is where I bought this from, um, calls it the um, Aurora Vintage Duo Cart, but everywhere else just calls it the Aurora Duo Cart. Um, this one is obviously the gold and burgundy finish. Um, there is also a uh, black with steel nib, um, sorry, steel cap finish, but I liked the look of this better. This to me is more uh, suited to being like a vintage style pen than the silver and black trim. Um, but it does have a bit of a higher price tag, oddly enough. Um, so this goes for $180. The black and steel version go, uh, goes for $156 US dollars, respectively. This actual pen in Canadian dollars turns out to be just under 200 bucks. Um, without any kind of discounting. Pen Chalet does quite frequently um, either 10 or 15% off their orders, uh, which works out for me because then essentially that pays for the shipping. Um, and to be honest, they're quickly becoming one of my favorite uh, US retailers because of that. So I like it. Um, so this pen here, uh, the clip or, you know, is matching the gold color of the cap. Um, so starting with the finial, it's just flat. You know, nothing, nothing really going on. The clip is pretty loose. It's not super firm. Um, it'll still hold on to things, but I, I don't really see it holding on to too, too much. Um, you'll see it in the closer up later, uh, but there are striations down the, the cap. Um, like I said, it's a little hard to show in this lighting, this angle, um, but you will see it in the close-up shots in a minute. Um, around the bottom of the cap, it says Aurora made in Italy. Um, you can kind of see that here. The body it tapers down a little bit. Obviously, it's all red. And the bottom here just has a gold kind of like button on the end. Uh, it is a snap cap, so it just pulls off. Uh, reveals a couple like gold embellishments here. Um, and a black grip section. By the way, I'm sorry for the background noise. Um, my dishwasher's on <laughs> and I'm in my kitchen. Uh, it's the only part, it's nighttime. Um, it's the only part of the house where I have semi-decent night lighting. I usually don't like to film at night because the lighting kind of stinks, um, but I'm going away for a bit and I do not want to lose a video for you guys, so I do apologize for that. Um, but anyway, back to the pen long black uh, grip section and it leads to a hooded nib 
So it looks very similar to the Lamy 2000, if any of you are familiar with that, the Parker 51 kind of. This actually shows a little bit more nib than the Parker 51, um, but it is pretty cool. You get a little peek of the feed there. Um, the grip section, obviously, like you can hold it anywhere and being a snap cap, there's no threads. There's a little teeny bit of a step down from the gold portion into the black grip, um, but it's it's so long that you can hold it like anywhere, basically. Um, so it's really not picky as to where you like to hold it. Uh, it sits very comfortably in my hand. It is a light pen. It is plastic, so, you know, there's nothing really going on there. Um, you can securely push the post. It does add a fair bit of weight to it when you post it. Um, a lot of weight, actually. Most of the weight is in the cap um, because the cap is solid metal. The pen is pretty much solid plastic. So if you push the post, it's gonna make it back weighted and it's heavy, uh, but you can do it. I don't like it that way. Um, if you unscrew the barrel here, you reveal, I have a uh, Aurora proprietary cartridge filled with Aurora blue black ink, um, but you can, it does come included with a um, Aurora proprietary cartridge converter. Um, and as well as you get like a little bottle about yay big of Aurora black ink. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so there's that, you can't really eyedropper convert this because the bottom piece like this here is metal and it does show through all the way at the end. Um, and it does look like there's a very, very, very thin inner barrel that looks metal, uh, but it's very thin. You can put uh, like the long cartridge in here kind of thing. Obviously that's what this is. It does come with, like I said, the converter. It also comes with one cartridge of blue ink, one cartridge of black ink, both by Aurora. Um, but I purchased the black, the blue black ink um, separately. The name Duo Cart used to come because the original Duo Cart made back in the day, you could put two cartridges. Um, so you would pop one in and you'd be using it, and you could put another spare cartridge just kind of chilling in the back. Um, so that way, when you were done, you could take that one out and pop in the other one. But this does not take two cartridges. You can't put two cartridges in here. But these are the long ones now, which hold like pretty much the same ink as both cartridges would anyways. Um, so ink capacity wise, you're not losing out. You're just technically, you know, the duo cart, so the, the two cartridges um, doesn't really apply. Um, but, you know, it doesn't really matter in my opinion. Uh, the snap cap, a lot of people have been talking about this, saying that they wish the snap cap was a little bit stiffer. Um, mine is actually pretty stiff. I don't feel like mine's going to pop off. It isn't the most secure out of any of them. There are some pens that I have that you really have to put effort in behind. Like, if you've ever used the Faber-Castell Loom fountain pens, um, those things you have to have like bionic hands practically to, to uncap. This one, you don't. Um, it is relatively easy to, to undo it, but I don't feel like mine's gonna like fall off like other people have been saying. So I don't know if I got lucky on that. I don't know if people are just super sensitive um, or you know they're used to that like Faber-Castell loom kind of thing. Um, and that's just not my experience. Um, so overall, I really, really like the look of the pen. Um, I like the fact that it is a little bit of a smaller pen. Like I said, I went for the more vintage looking, in my opinion, finish. Um, and I've been really happy with it so far. It is a steel nib. Um, so it's a little bit pricey for a steel nib for me, but I will be the first to admit um, that I have fallen, or I had fallen into the trap that a lot of fountain pen users do when they start getting into gold nib pens. Some people start to snub the steel nibs and I will admit, I did fall into that. Um, that said, I'm out of that now. I still do prefer gold nib pens, um, just the way they feel, but if you find a good steel nib, so for example, the review that I did of the um, Diplomat um, pen a couple weeks back, which 
Um, I'll try and put in the iCard if I remember, but um, it's the only Diplomat pen I've done, so if you do search through my videos, um, you'll find it. That pen blows me away. And that was like a sub $20 pen with a steel nib. It was fantastic. Um, this, again, being a steel nib, blows me away. So let's flip the camera around and I'm gonna show you why it blows me away. Okay, so we've got the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and you can already tell, look at that, that ink glimmer there. Oh yeah. Um, so like I said, this is with Aurora Blue Black ink, um, and this is the medium. It's the only nib size this comes in is medium, um, so just be aware of that. Um, but I do actually quite like it. Um, it's what I would consider a true medium to be. Um, so whatever you wanna take from that, you can take from that. Uh, so this pen is a steel nib, but it writes so well. Um, I mean, you can see here that you do get some wetness. It isn't like a gushing pen. Uh, now granted, this ink is a little on the dry side, not super dry, but a little bit on that side. Um, you can get a little bit of line variation, not too, too much, but a, but a little bit, um, but I quite like it. This nib is very smooth. Aurora's pens, Aurora's other steel nib pens, I should, I should say, um, usually feel a little bit on the toothy side. Um, but this one really doesn't. It's super, super smooth. And I've heard other reviewers talk about the same thing, um, that theirs is also really smooth. Um, and I quite like that. Um, I will say, much like the Lamy 2000, there is a little bit of a sweet spot. Um, so if you do rotate the pen too far one way or the other, it won't write. But that said, you know, you've got to, you have to like let it rotate pretty far to one side or the other uh, before that happens. Um, and you can also reverse write. Um, it's a little scratchy if you do that, um, but you can definitely get to like an extra fine on that end. Um, so yeah, overall, I'm super duper impressed. I really, really like this pen. Um, and the way that it performs. I haven't had any skips or hard starts. Like I said, if I'm holding the pen this way kind of thing, like as my hand rotates, which mine naturally does a little bit, um, every once in a while I will rotate it too far, but that's me, that's not the pen. Um, so yes, I'm very, very happy. I would 100% recommend it. Um, you know, it definitely keeps up with fast writing. Um, again, when I rotate a little bit, it kind of has an issue, but that's just my own fault. <laughs> um, so yeah, if, if you get a chance to pick one up, do definitely do that. Um, I'm not sure if these are limited or not. I don't think so, but I could be wrong on that. Um, but anyways, guys, that's going to be about it for me today. Uh, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you really like the video but haven't yet done so already, please do hit that subscribe button. New videos come out every Monday and Friday and the occasional Q&A on Tuesday. Um, don't be afraid of that comment section. And as always, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.